Have you ever wondered how to design interesting and original weapons? Well in this video I'm going to be breaking down and sharing a few methods to designing crisp and clean weapon concepts while going through my process. Hey guys, welcome back. It's TJ over here at Clifford Studio bringing you another concept art tutorial. If this is your first time, then welcome. I'm glad to have you here. If you're looking to improve as an artist by learning new tips and tactics in concept art and digital illustration, then consider subscribing and clicking that little notification tab to stay up to date with all my future content. Alright guys, so starting right off here, I wanted to begin by taking some basic military pistols that have already, for the most part, exist and duplicate it three times, saving me both time and allowing me not to have to worry about my proportions. Once here I can start manipulating my silhouettes and start working out different shapes to bring new life and originality into these designs and like I've said in other past videos, starting out with silhouettes can be extremely helpful when first working out your concepts. Alright, so after you're happy with your shapes and silhouettes, you can jump into your line work and details. Now it's important to be using straight and clean lines when designing weapons and props because for the most part, nothing is organic about them and they are completely machine slash man made. Additionally, I really want to keep similarities between these weapon designs, making sure they all can relate to each other as if they were part of the same set or belong to the same group of militants. So when I'm going about designing these, I'm trying to keep them between a clean and futuristic look and a slightly more modern look. Now going from the bottom to the top, you can see I go from being more conservative and a modern take on this to a way more crazy and out there. And I think that's really important in concept art to have a fine line and a balance between those two. In fact, for those of you who played Halo back in the day, when I was designing this Top Gun, I drew inspiration from the Needler. And as you can see, the handle that loops around the barrel is the main design element that I implemented when looking at old pieces of concept art. So speaking about functionality, when it comes to designing anything, you really want to make sure the thing you're designing will actually work in the real world or in game. In fact, when designing these three guns, one of my thoughts was in regards to the ammo clip and where it would fit in with each pistol design. Now this is important to know because of how crucial it is to know how your design is working inside and out so that you have clear communication between your game designers, 3D modelers, and your art directors. So as an example, at the bottom when I went the more conservative route, I went with an ammo clip that loaded through the handle of the gun, allowing the weapon to have a chamber and a slide. Now this is pretty standard in today's world and I still really enjoy the look a lot. Now moving on to the middle weapon, I wanted to experiment a bit. I wanted to have the clip in the front of the gun flush with the barrel. This would allow me to have the handle be more curved, similar to what you would find in a revolver to counter the weight from the front. Now for the third and final weapon design, like I said before, I wanted to have the handle connect to the front, creating a balanced weight distribution while the user is handling it. With all this in mind and deciding to go with the more futuristic and modern gun design route, I needed to have the ammo clip load into the top of the barrel with a slight ledge for easy reloading while keeping it aesthetically pleasing and clean. This however made it more complicated to fit the ammo clip into the gun especially with the weaver rail mount attached to the top of the weapon. So when jumping into color, I decided to go with a clean white and black look. Now I really enjoyed how this turned out, especially because of how strong the contrast was. And as a side tip for those who don't know, the strongest form of contrast that an artist, or anybody for that matter, can create is by using black and white. Now as I rendered this, I really wanted to create a sense of depth where the black was the underbody of the actual pistol itself and the white would be the armor that was attached and screwed onto the top of it. Alright, so with this being a gun design, these are weapons that are fired constantly and used on a regular basis. With that being said, I wanted to show some wear and tear by dirtying up the clean white 
with specks of dirt and grease. Now a good tip for designing weapons and armor or any old prop is to make sure to add weathering to your object's design showing that it has aged and is no longer perfect. This helps add a ton of interest to your piece and introduces an organic element into your design that wasn't previously there before. Alright guys, so we're approaching the end of the video. I really hope you guys liked this and were able to get some value out of this. If you guys enjoyed this enough, please hit that like button and leave a comment. I love interacting with all of you guys and honestly it just helps the channel grow, allowing others to learn as well. If this is something of interest and something you'd love to see more of, please consider subscribing. I've been posting weekly and I love meeting all of you and helping in any way that I can. If you want to stay up to date with me and follow my art live, I've linked my social media channels down in the description below as well as at the end of this video. With all that being said guys, this is TJ from Clifford Studio, take care.